What is up, my friends? How are we doing today? Talking a little bit about NIL, name, image, likeness, college sports, specifically football and UNLV. So we'll just jump right into it. Got my little note card right here because I was thinking about this. I was listening to Ryan Rosillo talk about this. I read about it online. Matthew Sluka, UNLV, played at Holy Cross four years, plays three games at UNLV, dispute as to whether or not he was owed $100,000 $100, promised or not. After a 3-0 start, chucks up the deuces, says he didn't get his money, says he's out. Now, I don't know about NCAA um, eligibility rules. I didn't look them up ahead of time. But I know there's a certain number of games you don't play. You can have another season. So does he have another season? I don't know. Did he just straight up say, no thank you until I get paid? essentially holding all the cards, the negotiation, right? You have a 3-0 start, an opportunity to make the college football playoff in the first year. It's expanded to the size that it is. And you say, oh, I didn't get my money. I'm out of here. Look, if it's business is business, it's strictly financial, and that's what you came there for, and that's what you didn't get, that's what it is. It opens up a whole realm of things that I don't think players even considered which is the fact they can hold teams, you know, hostage to an extent in regards to whether or not they're getting paid and how much they want paid and whether or not they play. Unlike any other situation, because if you did this in the NBA, let's say you had a certain, this happened before, um, certain players have opted to not play and fulfill their playing demands of a contract. Not horribly common because they often want another contract. But this NCAA thing is so different because when a player is playing in the NBA, NFL, whatever it might be, the longevity of their career is at stake. So they might not make all their money in one single lump sum endeavor. They might make it by the fact they played 15 years, 12 years, 9 years, 7 years. All those years being longer than the traditional 4 years in college. Now if you're a college quarterback who isn't going to have you know, a huge likelihood of making the NFL and even professional in that sake, but you have an awesome start and you want more money because this is your opportunity to get the money, well, you don't run the risk of saying, well, next year I can't get picked up because first off, teams probably would pick you up if you had another year of eligibility, pay-to-play kind of deal, but you're not playing for longevity. It's not like I have to go out there and maintain some sort of reputation for the next seven years to make sure I'm a good locker room guy for teams to keep me on board. It's the lack of infiniteness in a career, or I should say the constrained finiteness in a career of this in terms of NCAA makes this whole situation actually more favorable to the player side because regardless of what happens, they're done after their years. And regardless of what happens, if they're good enough, they can go play at the next level. Um, I'm all for players getting paid. I thought the Im name, image, likeness stuff made total sense. I know it's induced a lot of chaos. Teams, people transferring. It seems like basketball is way more used to this as a basketball player. Kids grew up in high school playing AAU. Everyone knows that AAU has its own side to it. And kids transfer teams all the time. In high school, they transfer teams all the time. So this wasn't super unique when it happened at the college level, especially because you have the one-and-done aspect in the NCAA NBA. Because even at one point, like I didn't mention, but I should have mentioned earlier, even NCAA had the ability to go from high school to uh, NBA at one point. I guess not NCAA. Basketball players had the ability to go from high school to the NBA, bypassing the NCAA as a whole. I think the NIL has actually helped NCAA basketball because it's kept people around. It's made it more incentivized to stay at the NCAA level. Guys who are tweeners, guys who might get talked into leaving early when they're not ready, might be talked into staying because they can hedge their bets with making money at the NCAA level. And then there's numerous leagues beyond the NBA or outside of the NBA that a player can play in. Football, totally different beast. So it... The players are in this unique stance. I got to thinking, like, who holds all the power in this situation? Is it the players? And then this whole debate about who's paying the person, where's the money coming from? And then I saw a tweet referencing Dave Portnoy talking about how he would strike a media deal, essentially, with 
and this is paraphrasing here, one of the uh, transfer portal guys. So Michigan can get a top 10 quarterback and, you know, says X amount of money would go to him. And you get a media deal, which as a quarterback makes total sense. As a business makes total sense. You want someone on your business front being a promoter of your business. What better than having the starting quarterback of a major college football team? But then I thought to myself, well, who's, who's pulling the strings there? No longer is it necessarily a college situation. Right? The, the university itself isn't the one funding that. It becomes external. And because certain universities might have certain external resources of funding that others don't, they obviously have an upper hand. But specifically that brand, because the brand themselves is the one funding them. So then I thought about it a little more. And let's play the game of where this goes. Hypothetically speaking, is it possible that several brands get together? Let's say, not massive brands, let's say decent sized brands, and they say, we don't have necessarily a school to go to or any ties and loyalty to a specific school, but we're gonna create a conglomerate. And we're gonna create a conglomerate and go to one of these smaller schools and exert our own power and presence there fund the daylights out of this football program, go out and get whoever you want, and essentially privatize to an extent, or even like a corporate raid of a university's football team. And now you become essentially a GM, and you're a bunch of very wealthy brands and individuals. You're putting these people, uh, obviously it would cause a massive uproar, but now you're putting the players, your successful future NFL players in front of your brand. You can sponsor in any sorts of way and commercials that you'd want. And now you have this huge synergy between players getting paid, the branding around the players, driving you know, influence to those brands. And as a brand, you can almost buy into it. Like, I'm gonna get into this conglomerate. Let me put X amount of money in. And now I'm basically part of this group that goes to a university takes over the funding for a football team and with NIL <laughs> goes and funds themselves a top 20 football team. Go get coaches, they go get players in a way that could never have done, been done before. Because now the college and the university is just a conduit through which funding can be done. In the past, you couldn't have like, no matter how much you loved your school, if you were a major brand and you were behind a certain school, you couldn't just go to that school. You could donate facilities. You could donate, you know, certain aspects to the school. We'll have amazing weight room, amazing practice facility. You'd have to do it in conjunction with building interest around the team, new stadium. Now you can just go straight to the players, right? Instead of like laying the bait for the players to come and, oh, look at our facilities, look at this and that. You can just go straight to the players now. So what's stopping situations where we have universities just funded by a whole smorgasbord of brands, and let's say those, the same way you have owners in a, you know, a basketball team or football team, you have minority owners and majority owner, and the and funding aspect of a football team, you go buy a struggling, former popular, moderately popular NCAA team. You go in there and you just fund the daylights out of it and you get whomever you want. I kind of secretly hope this happens. Just, it's taking it to the nth degree of Wild West capitalism and you have players holding out, but then you have the ability for brands to exert their power at universities, um, specifically the schools. You don't have to have like any sort of allegiance, I don't under think so, to fund these schools. It's not like you have to be an alumni. You can just get a whole bunch of money and go to these teams and get or a team and go get players. You could just like a NCAA 2024-25 uh, video game. It's like you're my career. You're my dynasty thing. You just go take a university and you go get all the funding you want. I wonder if it will go there. I don't know if you could get away with it in basketball. Maybe you could with basketball. Maybe it's easier in basketball, like blue chips. You've seen the movie Blue Chips where the guy is a struggling coach and he goes and gets like Shaq and all these guys on his team. 
I don't remember the movie's details. I apologize as a basketball fan. I guess it's embarrassing to not know the ins and outs of it. Um, but same idea. It seems like that's a super possible situation. I don't understand why it hasn't been explored. And Portnoy has always been uh, someone who pushes barstool and kind of the front of things. I believe when NIL opened, he was like one of the first people to announce like you can become a barstool athlete, message him or message whomever it might be. I wonder if this will happen. I wonder if brands will eventually just start completely funding teams. And then you could have podcasts around those teams. You could have media around those teams. You could have commercials around those teams. You could have um, whatever level of exposure around those teams. And I wonder, I wonder how much money it would take. I mean, a lot. But imagine, like, how much do shoe brands pay for what's, what's like Nike's deal for LeBron or something like that? Twenty-five million a year, maybe more. Um, I mean, my goodness, I think a team could pull it off. A team, a a, a corp, a brand could pull off because like twenty-five million. That's would that pay for a whole team. I mean, I'm sure that'd be more than enough for a whole team, especially if you're going to get guys who maybe be twenty-five million dollars, like a salary cap for a single year. I haven't ran all the math on it. I want to put my thoughts out there while I could. Where this will end up, I don't know. I think it's fun to watch. I think it's kind of fun to see as an external observer, as a spectator, as someone who kind of enjoys the shakeup and chaos this has created. So what will happen next? Who knows? But this, little, this move by a UNLV quarterback is definitely one that showcases the power a player has. And I'll see where it goes. Just want to share my thoughts with you all. As always, appreciate you all and take care.